Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we are going to cover the release of Unity 2017.1. Now some of you may not already know this, but Unity 2017.1 was released last week and everyone has been scrambling to cover or get to know as much of it as possible. We have been doing the same thing as well, playing with some of the additions that Unity has made for t version 2017.1 and testing through some of the older functionalities to see if there are any major updates. Now before we dive into all of the stuff that Unity has changed, I did want to really quickly showcase a few of the videos that we will be releasing this week also covering 2017.1. So in the next week we are going to cover the donut emission shape, which is actually pretty cool and a lot of fun to play around with. We will be creating another video covering the 2D sprite mask, which is again really cool, and I was amazed at how easy this was to actually implement. Another video that we will be creating is going to cover the particles noise module. We will also be creating a video that is going to be covering the post processor effects or the new stack. And finally, if we are able to complete the videos for the Cinemachine and Timeline updates, then we will release those videos as well in the next week. Okay, coders, without further delay, let's cover some of the known issues, features, changes, and improvements for Unity t version 2017.1. We are going to cover the API changes as well, but there are a lot of them, so we are going to do that in a different video. Okay, we are going to start with the known issues because we definitely need to know what those are. There are only three of them. The first one deals with audio, and on Windows, the audio source attached to a video player produces choppy sound when game iterations are overrunning. For global illumination, lit clustering debug visualization does not show. And for XR, there are rendering problems on Pixel Daydream when using 4X or 8X multi-sample anti-aliasing with single pass stereo. Now that last issue is actually being caused by a driver issue so that issue is going to have to be fixed outside of Unity. Now we are going to cover some of the features that Unity has released with version 2017.1. Again there are a lot of them so we are not going to cover them all but we will be sure to link to this page on Unity's website and the description below so that you coders can review the full list. So starting off with 2D, Unity has introduced a Sprite Atlas which is a new asset and the Sprite Atlas will eventually replace the Sprite Packer. Based on what I have seen, this gives us more control of the packaging of our sprites and speeds up the workflow process as well. Also for 2D, Unity has introduced Sprite ma Masks. We are going to create a video, as I sh said earlier, to showcase this component as well. But basically this will allow us to easily mask sprites in world space using this new component and it's really really cool. Now let's move on to animation. For animation a new game object recorder has been introduced in Unity Editor.experimental.animations which you can see by this gif here. Now let's move on to the build pipeline. For the build pipeline the asset bundle browser is now out of beta. This tool allows us to view and edit the configuration of asset bundles for our Unity projects. Now let's move on to some collab updates. This update is actually pretty cool. Basically Unity has added in some in-progress functionality that allows developers using Unity Collaborate to see who has made local changes to a scene or prefab before the changes have actually been published. So that could be helpful to teams using Collab. Now we're going to move on to the editor. Unity has introduced a new arc handle class which has been added into UnityEditor.IMGUI.Controls, which allows us to interactively edit arcs in scene view. Now we're going to move down to particles. So there's a lot of other stuff here, but again, we'll link to this so you guys can check it out. Inside of particles, Unity added in support for using sprites in the particle system via a texture sheet animation module, which is pretty cool. Unity also added in a noise module to the particle systems that allows us to add noise to the sizes or rotations of our particles. And I've actually played around with that module as well and it is really really cool and allows you to create some really cool effects pretty quickly. Finally for particles, Unity added in a new donut emission shape which is actually again it's a lot of fun to play with. And we're actually going to create a video showing you guys uh, what we were able to create really quickly using this new emission shape. Okay that's going to do it for the features that we are going to cover in this video. Again, there's a lot of them in here, so 
feel free to you know click on the link below and check these out for yourself. Now, we are going to go into a much greater level of detail in those videos covering the new assets or features, but this video is really more of a briefing on version 2017.1, so let's move on to the changes that Unity has made for this version. Now, we're only going to cover a couple here because there really aren't that many changes. So, for the editor, Unity has added in a new game object submenu called Game Objects Effects, which allows us to easily add particle systems systems, trails, and lines. If you've already downloaded 2017.1, you may have noticed some additional submenus, and they seem to have added in quite a few there. This is the only one they point out here, but I definitely noticed a couple of different submenus while I was using the new version. Now for OS X, Unity disabled Metal on Mac OS versions 10.12.2 and 10.12.3 for stability reasons. They don't go into greater detail there, they just say stability reasons. Now finally for Windows, Unity removed support for building Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1 application and Unity renamed Windows Store to Universal Windows Platform. Okay again there are several other changes made but those are just a few of the ones that actually stand out. Now let's move on to some of the improvements. Again, there are a lot of them. So we are just going to cover the ones that we find to be really important or maybe the ones that you'll, you will actually be using. So for Android, the AP, APK files are now signed using the new APK signature scheme version 2. And OBB compatibility is now done using build ID rather than a hash of the OBB file. Moving on to asset import, Unity added the option of computing weighted normals when importing FBX files. They fixed normal generation for hard edges and changing tabs in the model importer inspector does not force you users to apply changes anymore. The final one we're going to cover for asset importing is that Unity reduced the import time for, for FBX assets with humanoid animations. Now moving on to the build pipeline, a scripts only build is now available on all platforms, so that's kind of cool. Now let's move down to collab. There are a couple of updates for collab here that are actually pretty cool as well. For collab, the project browser now has filters for all modified, all excluded, all conflicts, and all in progress. So that should help us see what's going on or what's occurring in our project if we're using Unity Collab. And a right-click menu has been added into the project browser that allows us to see differences, revert, and it also allows for conflict resolution. So that's pretty cool as well. Now we're going to move down to the editor. For the editor, the DX12 editor is now more responsive and a little bit faster. Improvements were also made to the package export loading state. And the final one we're going to cover for the editor is that scripts will be opened correctly in JetBrains Writer when selecting it as an external script editor. We actually did a video reviewing the JetBrains Writer application and we thought it was pretty cool. Now let's move down to Global Illumination, or GI. The big update here is that Unity has upgraded Enlighten SDK to version 3.08p1. For iOS, Unity added in support for watch apps and watch app extensions in the Xcode extension API. Now let's move down to OS X. For OS X, Unity added in App Store category field to player settings and improved the info.plist generation. Also for, o for OS X, Unity added in support for loading the first scene asynchronously when showing the splash screen. So that's pretty cool too. Now let's move on to particles. And this update has been huge for particles. A lot of stuff has gone into the particles for this update. And I strongly suggest you start testing these out. Okay, so the first one we're going to cover is that particles can now align to their velocity direction, which is really cool. And I've actually played with this a little bit. You can also now emit particles over distance for local space systems. Particles can now apply forces to colliders that they hit, and they've also got a pretty cool GIF here actually showing that occurring, and that is really, really cool. Imagine if you're building a flamethrower now, you can easily have that flamethrower just use particles and actually apply the forces directly, so that's pretty cool. They've sort of got like a meteor shower going on here, which again is cool, but this really opens up the world of particles in Unity. Continuing with particles, you can play particle systems when your game is paused by choosing to use either scaled or unscaled time for the simulation. Also for particles, you can randomize the spawn positions of particles with a new option in the shape module. The final one we're going to cover for particles is that scene lighting can now affect lines and trails. Again, really cool, really important, and expanding the world of particles for, for Unity. Now the last thing we're going to cover here is actually 
64 Samsung TV. Unity Web Request is now supported on Samsung TV, which is really cool. You know, Unity seems to really be opening up on a lot of different platforms and applying a lot of their knowledge into expanding these platforms. There is a lot of stuff in this update that we're not going to cover in this video. This is again just sort of covering some of the new stuff that we find really important. Of course there are a lot of API changes but like I said at the beginning of this video we're going to create another video that dives into some of the API changes because there are a lot of them and we want to have that separate video so that we can initially play with 2017.1, test out some of the API changes and then see how they affect Unity. And a lot of these API changes actually apply to the newer features of Unity and not necessarily some of the old ones. So it's not like they're changing up the way you have to get component or something like that. Or at least I haven't seen that yet. Okay, coders, that is going to do it for this video. There are a lot of fixes that Unity has implemented for this version as well. But again, we want this video to really cover the newer aspects of version 2017.1. Let us know in the comments below if you would like for us to review the fixes that Unity implemented as well. And we can create another video going through the fixes. Finally, we will be releasing several videos covering a lot of this new functionality over the coming weeks with several videos actually coming out this week. So definitely be sure to check those videos out and I look forward to seeing you coders in those videos. Okay coders, I hope that you enjoyed that video. We are constantly adding new videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It allows us to continue making great content for you coders. And if you are feeling extremely generous, please check out our Patreon account. Here are a few of our other tutorials just in case you want to keep on learning. If you become a patron of Renaissance Coders, you can get access to our source code and our project files as well. Okay coders, that's going to do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching.